This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Warframe. Don't miss Warframe's highly anticipated digital event, TennoCon, on July 16th, where players and attendees will be treated to a slew of first look reveals, including the upcoming open world expansion, the Duviri Paradox. You can join through Twitch throughout TennoCon for highly valuable drops, including the rare Titania Prime. What are you doing in here? It's our day off! Oh, just conducting some research. I've discovered a Tenno foundry in the process of crafting a new Warframe. I'm just about wrapped. What are you doing here? Sometimes I have these horrible nightmares and I just wake up here in a cold sweat. I don't even think my car's in the parking lot. <laughs> but, but what you're doing sounds way more interesting. So tell me, what Warframe's your favorite? Oh, a scientist doesn't play favorites. Oh, bullshit. Our job is the equivalent of banging action figures together. You've got to have a favorite. Fine, if I had to pick, I'd go with the very first Warframe ever created, the death-dealing techno-organic ninja Excalibur. You mean he's a cyborg ninja? Like Raiden from Metal Gear? What? No, they're not technically cyborgs. More like super-powered biomechanical vessels that are unlike anything I've ever seen. Trust me, this is gonna get crazy, so spoilers ahead. Yeah, yeah, just give me the lore already, Wiz! Long ago in the Origin system, the Orican Empire discovered the Void, an extra-dimensional spatial realm that allowed for travel across vast cosmic distances. However, when they sent the first colony ship through it, the Zeraman 10 the Void drove all the adults on board into an insane murderous frenzy. Huh. Sounds like my first wedding reception. Okay. The children, though, absorbed the Void's energies, imbuing them with the powers they needed to defend themselves against their mad parents and survive. When the Zeraman 10 emerged from the Void, the children were permanently changed. They had become the Tenno. Well, I'm sure those traumatized little whippersnappers received only the best of care. If only. Instead, the Tenno were taught to use their void powers to control Warframes through a process called transference. But their abilities were so powerful that the Orican grew to fear the Tenno and tried to have them destroyed. The Tenno were hidden from the Orican and put into a deep sleep. That is, until one day, they were reawakened to defend a war-torn origin system guided by their adoptive mother, the Lotus. So they're basically sci-fi child soldiers. Sort of, though the Lotus does care deeply for her adopted children and has devoted her efforts to protecting as many Tenno as possible. There are almost 50 different Warframes currently out there, each with their own unique abilities and combat styles. But I think that the very first created Excalibur is the deadliest. He's kind of reminded me of someone. A master swordsman with his razor sharp Skana, Excalibur is an expert at racking up quick kills faster than the eye can track. He's unmatched in skill and precision with a blade, especially when augmented by his unique abilities, like Radial Blind, which releases a flash of light to incapacitate nearby foes, or Radial Javelin, which blasts out a wide burst of energy spears. But his greatest and most iconic is easily the Exalted Blade, a sword of light that can slice just about anything to pieces. You don't get much cooler than that. Huge ass laser guns, Wiz. Huge ass laser guns automatically make you cooler. Funny you should say that. While individual Warframes like Excalibur may specialize in certain fields, they all have access to an incredible suite of futuristic weaponry, like the Nucor, which can fire concentrated beams of microwaves, literally cooking you from the inside out, or the Glaxian, which halts molecular vibrations entirely, freezing you in place. There are guns that fire radioactive plasma, toxic barbs, or even acidic needles. He has, and I'm not exaggerating here, over 500 different named weapons. Man, he sounds like a one-man army. Oh, you think that's crazy? Excalibur can call down an Archwing, basically a futuristic space jetpack with missiles, force fields, and even the ability to fire miniature black holes. Okay, yeah, that's pretty powerful. While Warframes usually battle alongside one another, they have had the occasional head-to-head -head scrap, where they've exhibited the durability to survive even the most powerful attacks that other Warframes have to dish out. For example, blasts of concentrated antimatter from the Warframe Nova. Sounds pretty unstoppable, but I think I have someone in mind that might put that to the test. Okay, do you really want to talk about Raiden? Is that what this is? Come on, Wiz. Child soldier, half robot assassin, glorious Nippon Steel. It's a perfect match. Raised from childhood to be a trained killer in the war-torn streets of Liberia by the future president of the United States, Jack never knew what it meant to control his own destiny, to live his own life. 
The only thing he knew was how to kill, and he proved it when he accomplished one of the greatest feats in video game history, surviving the absolute mind f that was Metal Gear Solid 2. Legions of angry fanboys be damned, Solid Snake was yesterday's news, this was Raiden. Birthday suit and all. Too bad for him that a shadowy extra-governmental body known as the Patriots captured him and turned him into a cyborg for their own complicated purposes. Even after the Patriots' downfall, Raiden struggled to build a life that he could call his own, pulled between his sense of justice and his genuine ecstasy for war. Well, at least he's got to put his weeb skills to work with the weapons he's pulled off the corpses of all the poor souls that dared mess with him. He's got Dystopia, a magnetic scythe that pulls you towards your enemy, or Le Etranger. Wow, I, I think you actually said that right. Which is a convertible staff slash whip combination made of arms. Plus, rocket launchers, claymore mines, EMP grenades, and all his stuff from MGS2. But nothing beats his high-frequency blade he inherited from Jetstream Sam, the Murasama. I have to admit, the high-frequency blades are marvels. They vibrate at such high speeds that they can destabilize the physical structures of metals on contact, greatly increasing their cutting ability. It's basically robot kryptonite, if that makes sense. Even with his original high-frequency blade, Raiden could cut through massive Metal Gears like tissue paper. And of note, those Metal Gears were not made of ordinary steel, but carbon nanotubes, one of the strongest materials known to man. The bonds between carbon atoms are incredibly strong, which means that the tensile strength of carbon nanotubes is greater than even the toughest metals, like titanium. Using the high end of potential sheer strengths, slicing clean through a building-sized Metal Gear ray would require an energy equivalent to, at most, 100 kilotons of TNT. And the Murasama is red, which makes it even cuttier. How else would he have had a chance against our lord and savior, Senator Armstrong and his nanomachine, son? Unlike those Beltway pansies, this hulked out Ayn Rand can hit the ground so hard it splits lava. He was somehow a vastly more difficult boss than the stadium-sized Metal Gear Excelsis riding toward to shreds minutes earlier. Don't F with this, Senator. That is, unless your nickname is Jack the Ripper. Raiden spent years fighting for justice and denying who he really was inside, and it took his battles with Desperado Enforcement to finally realize it. He's a killer plain and simple, and he lives to test his skills against others. When he enters Ripper mode, any last shred of inhibition leaves his body, and his strength and skill skyrocket. And that's exactly what Armstrong saw in Raiden, living proof of his philosophy in action. Someone who pulled themselves out of hell with nothing but their determination to survive. But Raiden did not see it that way. Just because he had to fight for survival doesn't mean the whole world had to. And it was only through an act of generosity from Raiden's slain rival, Sam, that he managed to win. His sword may have been a tool of justice, not used in anger, but the Murasama wasn't that sword, and with it he ended Armstrong once and for all, and lived the rest of his life on his own terms. Look, I, I know we're just shooting the shit, but Raiden would definitely kick Excalibur's ass. You've, you've got to be joking. Maybe I didn't sell it well enough with my spiel, but Warframes like Excalibur are unbelievably powerful, on a whole other level from cyborg ninjas like Raiden. Oh yeah? We're in the lab. We've got the research done. Prove it. Okay, the Mursama is impressive, sure, but Excalibur's futuristic arsenal is hundreds of years more advanced and leagues more varied. Raiden would just be overwhelmed. Excalibur may win in quantity, Wiz, but quality is what matters most. And considering his weapons are mostly made of metal, it won't be any trouble for Raiden to melt right through him with the Murasama, especially with how crazy fast he is. Raiden can run up walls and break dance with leggy, moving robots attached to his feet. He can slice bullets out of the air and even boost his reactions with blade mode, where the entire world slows down to a near stop. Well, sure, Metal Gear characters like Revolver Osla can shoot bolts of electricity out of the air with regular pistols, which is probably around hundreds of times faster than sound. I guess that counts as fast. Oh please, that's nothing! Raiden can increase his perception to the point that raindrops around him aren't even moving. That might not seem as crazy at first glance, but he's also able to swing his sword dozens of times while time is almost stopped. By my calculations, that'd be about 11% the speed of light. Oh, oh, is this happening? Is this actually happening? You want a calc off, big guy? Then let's go. Excalibur can literally block a beam of light with his sword. Judging by the distance it moved relative to how far the light beam traveled, Excalibur had to have been swinging at 
9% the speed of light. <laughs> Calc King dethroned! Look at me! I'm the math boy now. Look, speed is only part of the picture. Another Warframe, Atlas, was strong enough to smash apart a giant asteroid. Now, Excalibur may not be one-punching asteroids, but he's proven more than capable of wiping out entire platoons of elite soldiers. But remember, Wiz, you said it yourself. Robot Kryptonite. All old Jack needs is one good swing of that Murasama, and Excalibur's getting sliced to pieces. You really think your Warframe can take on a pure-blooded killer like Raiden? Oh, you really think your cyborg ninja can take on a ghost soldier from the future? Well, I guess we'll never know. Forever a mystery. No way to determine a winner. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Oh, yeah, I could definitely go for a beer right now. No, no you idiot. Let's settle this the old-fashioned way. Oh, uh, yeah! It's time for a death battle! This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Warframe, but let me ask Wiz, what is Warframe exactly? Warframe is a free-to-play online action game set in an ever-changing sci-fi universe with a passionate community of more than 70 million registered players worldwide. That sounds awesome! What's it about? You play as the Tenno, an enigmatic race of ancient warriors capable of tremendous agility, speed, and superpowered abilities. Wield an arsenal of more than 600 weapons, including blades, guns, and more. That sure sounds like a Tenno fun, eh, Wiz? Please stop. You you follow an epic cinematic quest that combines a personal story of self-discovery with an action-packed space opera. Embark on missions that involve ninja-like acrobatic shooting and melee, personal space flight, open world exploration, collaborative spaceship combat, and more. If that sounds exciting to you, Warframe is available on all platforms. Play Warframe for free today on all platforms by using our sign-up link below. Digital Extremes is giving Death Battle viewers their very own free collection of Excalibur-themed items. Until July 19th, go to Warframe.com or visit the in-game marketplace and use promo code WFDEATHBATTLE to redeem it. The Death Battle Excalibur item collection includes a special Excalibur helmet, deadly powerful weapons, and more. Everything you need to personalize your in-game Excalibur and unleash his lethal ninja prowess on the battlefield. Doctor, are you seeing this? Tenno, an enemy is ahead and that foundry is crafting a warframe. <laughs> Straight to the point. Metal freaks like you usually got a monologue first. His sword, it's weakening yours. Sir, or can I call you Jack? A big fan. Who the hell? I'm busy here. Wait, just, just listen. You'll never expect your secret weapon. All right, listen. He's definitely hiding in the cardboard box. Get out of here.
my child. You're not done yet. I'm surging your Warframe's power systems. Excellent work, Tenno. Now for the Foundry. Oh, it's finished. KO! Shock one up for the Calc King. The Math Boy is back. No, oh, infinite ammo, Wiz. He had infinite ammo. And sure, and yes, that is 100% indisputably canon, but there was a lot more going on here that eventually gave Excalibur the win. I guess so. Both were super skilled swordsmen and ninja, and their speeds were almost even. So the fight was ultimately gonna come down to whose tech was better. And I've gotta say, it looks like Excalibur just had a lot more to pull from. Warframes have access to an absolutely absurd amount of varied weapons. Despite Raiden's unique armaments, they were never going to stack up in sheer quantity. And consider specific guns like Galaxian, which can halt molecular movement, a direct counter to Raiden's high-frequency blade. While Excalibur may not always be carrying it, every Warframe is proficient with each of their over 500 weapons. One blast of that, and Raiden might as well be working with a regular slab of steel. Excalibur was way stronger too. Sure, Raiden could cut through giant Metal Gear rays made of carbon nanotubes, generating up to 100 kilotons of TNT. But not as much as Excalibur. Another Warframe, Atlas, was strong enough to smash apart a giant asteroid, meaning it would have to be at least 6 kilometers across, just like the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs. Now, Atlas did not completely halt its kinetic energy. By exploiting fissures within the asteroid, he was able to pulverize it to dust. That means his punch had to hit with an energy of at least 46 gigatons of TNT. Sure, in canon, Atlas is stronger than Excalibur, but they fought and defeated similar enemies, so Excalibur would naturally have to be somewhere in Atlas's ballpark. Even if Excalibur only possessed 1% of Atlas's strength, he'd still be nearly 4,000 times stronger than Raiden. That's pretty consistent with the energy output of Nova's antimatter blast, too. Warframes are just that tough. Furthermore, even with the High Frequency Blade's unique vibrating ability, it cannot cut through everything. Raiden's original blade actually shattered against Armstrong's super hard skin and required the stronger Murasama to finish the job. Against a foe vastly more durable than anyone Raiden's ever faced, it's unlikely the Murasama would score a kill in time. Even if Raiden got enough hits in to break Excalibur's shields and eventually land a fatal blow, the Tenno operator piloting would still survive unharmed. Raiden put up a valiant effort, but Excalibur's absurd arsenal, impressive durability, and raw power put an end to the silver-haired swordsman. Excalibur had the metal and the gear to make Jack R.I.P. The winner is Excalibur. <laughs> Told you so. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Warframe for sponsoring this battle. Quick disclaimer, Digital Extremes and the Warframe team did not dictate the victor of this episode, nor even the matchup. They were fine with it going either way, and we wouldn't have accepted the sponsorship otherwise. So we're really thankful to them for understanding this show. Remember, you can get a free collection of Excalibur-themed goodies from Warframe.com or the in-game marketplace with the promo code WF-DEATH-BATTLE. And don't miss out on TennoCon July 16th. I'm Jocelyn, and I've been promoted. I'm about to do all the research nobody else wants to, straight from the desk of Death Battle!